sperm abnormalities, it's loss of your organs due to other diseases related to the same thing. It's all caused by a plant-based low animal fat diet. So the cause is singularly the same. And ultimately the treatments are very similar yet because in modern medicine, we don't understand the cause. So all we care about is how can I fix you? And I've got lots of, lots of, of, of tools in the toolbox. Welcome back to the Rock Your Best Life podcast. With me today, I have the wonderful Dr. Robert Kill. And he is a um, New York, New York um, fertility doctor. <laughs> yes. And he's an author and just a full of life guy. Welcome. I'm alive and we, we can talk. That's the good thing. Yes, yes. I'm just so impressed by your body of work and by everything you do. And then, you know, of course, all of your fun, like YouTube videos and Instagram reels. I love them so much. (laughs) I'm having a fun time with them. And this is the best environment. The carnivore keto environment, the community is so wonderful because people are so excited to talk about something that is like the most and best kept secret ever. And we're kids in a candy store that we found the Holy grail of candy. Well, I was going to ask you too, because it seems like you found the fountain of youth. So well, I get where, younger where and younger. It? <laughs> well, it, it, number one is uh, I, your attitude is so important in life and you can change it like that. And so I think uh, just like nutrition diet, uh, we change and it uh, it has an immense, immense effect on all of our lives, more so than we realize. And, you know, I had pretty good energy before, but I have like out of control energy and my moods are better than my moods were always reasonably good. But I got a little depressed and anxious before and it's kind of gone. Yes, I can. I, you know, I can relate to that so much because I had that all my life. I had these I was in this constant roller coaster of emotions and you know blood sugar levels out you know were crazy and then once I figured out you know low carb and keto and then carnivore it's like I was like wow a door was open it it it, yeah I found this really about 12 years ago uh almost before that it was keto before it was paleo I mean I've been Atkins paleo keto carnivore for almost 20 years now and it's just amazing. You know, I used to be a crazy exerciser and, and just like worked hard to stay healthy looking and feeling, but it wasn't working. And I, I tripped over carnivore after learning about keto and paleo. Um, there's no going back on this one. Well, yeah. And um, I want to know, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. What is your story? How did you become one of the best fertility doctors. Um, and how, what was your journey to better health? Well, uh, born and raised in Los Angeles. And I always say, let's see, I was, I was kicked out of school in a gang, couldn't read. I had dyslexia. My father was in jail, but I had loving parents no matter what. And they were very helpful in guiding me. And I was a worker. And I love to go to work. I love to work around the house. I love to build things. I love to dismantle things. My brother and I love to blow up things, but (laughs) usually there are models and we were okay with that. But um, I became a doctor. Um, I was a, I did a lot of pottery in high school and jewelry and woodwork. And I broke my leg in, in junior college at age 19. And I thought I wanted to go into economics and business. And I was doing pottery and all this stuff. And I broke my leg and I met a doctor who was a hippie. And I was like, I really admired the guy, took great care of me. And I was inspired to be a doctor. And I looked in the books and it said, in order to be a doctor, you don't have to know how to read. You have to be smart. And I didn't believe I was any of those things, but I was really driven to do it. And it took me six years of undergrad. One year, I didn't get into medical school, but I persisted. I became a doctor. I thought I wanted to go into family practice, uh, general medicine. I went to UC Davis Medical School in California. and um, But I really loved obstetrics and gynecology. Mm. But 
I failed again and I didn't get into the program I wanted to go to. So I did a year of internal medicine and I thought, wow, I love this internal medicine until they called me and said, hey, do you want to do OB again? I took it. And I really loved surgery. I love primary care. I thought the beauty of OBGYN it encompassed uh, the, all the aspects that I was really excited to, to, to be in. And I believed all the medicine I was learning mm -hmm. was science and answered all the questions. And if I just gave people the right medications and the right dissections, they would be healthy. And lo and behold, after years of practicing, uh, it wasn't working. Mm. Plenty of people got better, but plenty of people didn't. People even died uh, that you didn't expect to die that were healthy in many other areas. My mm. sister died of diabetes. My best friend had cancer at 52. And mm. I was like, well, wait a minute. They're healthy. And this shouldn't happen. And that inspired me to begin to look more deeply at the science Mm -hmm. And maybe there's something we had that was wrong. And that sort of began the journey about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I began to look at meditation, prayer, mindfulness, yoga, acupuncture. And then I found paleo. A bunch of my patients were getting pregnant on paleo. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I met Maria Emmerich oh. and I read all of her books on keto. I was like, wow, this is the answer. And mm -hmm. then I met someone that was doing carnivore and I was like, okay, I did the carnivore in one month, bowel bleeding, hemorrhoids, uh, constipation, migraines, kidney stones, ADHD, OCD, uh, arthritis, uh, eczema, psoriasis, if I didn't mention those already, gone. Wow. That's a long list. Like, <laughs> wow. There's something to this carnivore that was better than keto, that was better than paleo. And I started writing about it and talking about it and blogging about it. Uh, and I was seeing so many people get the benefit. I'm like, well, I'm a doctor. I spent a lot of heartache, money, uh, failures, and energy to become that doctor. Why am I not telling people this most important information that they might be open to and make the changes that they deserve without the doctor, the dissection or the drugs. Yet I still practice that full time and many people benefit, but maybe there's something else we can do here. That's my basic story. Wow. That's an amazing story. And I love how you have just like come from you know, um, just changing your mindset, really, and how that changed your whole life, and then how you're open to learn a different way, you know, because a lot of people that go through the medical um, system, they they just become, yeah, tunnel vision. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and they're not open to see what's out there, you know. Well, we're trained that way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're trained to disbelieve other people's opinions and certainly to disbelieve our patients because we know better. Um, and and I, I've learned over the years to to um, honor each and every human being, no matter the size, shape, age, weight, gender, color, no matter what, and listen more. And I think that began long ago, but certainly UC Davis helped in that. Many of my mentors there were very uh, mindful of that. Um, but I, I, I've been writing, I wrote a book called The Fertile Secret almost 20 years ago. Wow. Uh, I began it. And it's basically on the concept of The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, that mm -hmm. the thoughts we think create the landscape of our lives. And it really starts there. And we need to be open to changing the conversation and the belief that science somehow already knows the answer, but it's actually very bendable, moldable, changeable. And we have to imagine that all those that came before us thought they had the right answer could be as wrong as we are. Yes. I agree. I mean, and how important do you think it is to kind of get people to get down to the nitty gritty um, with getting to know themselves and listen to what their body is telling them, you know, with like kind of an inner knowing? Well, 
let's see, the body lies, mm -hmm. the mind drives. Okay. okay, okay. The body lies, the mind drives. So what you think is what the body is telling you. Okay. So I know it's kind of, well, you got to listen to your body. Well, maybe not because we've been so brainwashed to believe my body says this, it must mean that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling jittery. I must have a low glucose level. I need sugar. That's not true. There are many, like I need coffee or I need tobacco or I need alcohol. Well, do you need those things? Right? We know that's not true. So I think we really need to break and blow up what we think our body's telling us. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And again, if this is radical, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but again, we are living, we're, we're zombies. We're just, you know, the refrigerator has food. I open it up. I'm hungry. I, I eat carbs. Oh, I must need them, right? Mm -hmm. My body's telling me I need sugar or plants or vegetables. Uh, and, and yet maybe that's not true. Yes. Maybe it, maybe it has more to do with the retraining, right? Retraining the brain. Well, uh, Bella, Steak and Butter Gang, is like yeah. massive retraining. Right? Oh, yes, yes. And, and, and so... that and, so, and getting into a community, that really helps a lot. A community with a different language. Mm -hmm. And the hard part is all of our language is so like all over the place, or it's way over here, but we have to begin to move it here and begin to look at it and touch it and play with it that maybe bacon, eggs, butter, beef, eating one meal a day and kilts as ice cream and lots of salt mm -hmm. is okay. But the brain lies a yeah. lot. Well, it's a lot. I mean, I look at all these other foods like, you know, um, carb filled foods and sugar and all these things. I look at them now as drugs. Those are drugs. Caffeine. Um, <laughs> these are all drugs that we are addicted to, right? All of them are drugs that are made by plants. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the plants are the ultimate predator and we're the prey. We're just walking by and it says, you're going to like this. And, you know, again, it's, it's, they're drug dealers. The plants are the drug dealers and, and we're the addicts. No doubt about it. Yes. Yes. I agree. <laughs> well, I want to know a little bit about what you do with, you know, infertility. Because I have, I had noticed this even with my own, you know, um, group of friends. A lot of people were, were, you know, coming and saying they were having trouble getting pregnant. They were not getting their period. Um, what do you think is is the big culprit with this big epidemic that we we're having? <laughs> well, number one, we're born for one ultimate reason: mm -hmm. as to reproduce nothing else matters. And so being infertile, whether it's menstrual regularity, it's sperm abnormalities, it's loss of your organs due to other diseases related to the same thing, it's all caused by a plant-based low animal fat diet. So the cause is singularly the same. And ultimately the treatments are very similar. Yet because in modern medicine, we don't understand the cause. So all we care about is how can I fix you? And I've got lots of, lots of, of, of tools in the toolbox that um, can help with that. But ultimately, the canary in the coal mine is infertility, meaning everyone says they're healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm healthy. I look great. I I'm the right BMI, if there is one, I don't think there is personally, but I'm the right BMI, I have regular cycles, my sperm's okay, my, my, my numbers all look good, why am I not getting pregnant? Well, because you're not healthy. Because if you're not reproducing without assistance, something's wrong. And the why part of it is simple. A high plant-based diet, 
is full of sugar. Mm -hmm. It's full of chemicals like estrogen, progesterone, uh, cyanide, arsenic, caffeine, testosterone. Plus it's full of antigens, lectins, oxalates, phytates. These are glycolipoproteins that are antigenic, meaning they, they're like dust particles that get all of your body and then they cause inflammation, including your ovaries, tubes, uterus, prostate, testicles. And, wow. and, and, um, and then they come with microbes, mm -hmm. these bacteria, yeast, and viruses, and other microbes that you and I probably have never heard of. They get into our body and sugar, yeast, and bacteria make what? Alcohol. Oh, okay. I didn't think about that. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So probiotics mm -hmm. and sugar in your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, your intestines, your colon, your rectum are making sugar into alcohol. Oh, wow. Is that good for us? No. And you know, that makes a lot of sense because before I came to carnivore, even I was eating a plant heavy keto diet. And I thought that was the answer for about four years. Yes. <laughs> but I did but too. I, 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 and I had um, candida yeast overgrowth. That's why I came to low carb is to get rid of that. But I didn't know that all those plants were actually helping to feed that. Because when they can't get the sugar, they go find the sugar. Well, And, and that's what I, I learned. <laughs> keto is a high fat diet. It's not a low carb diet because we use the yeah. word low carb and, and people think lettuce is not a sugar. Mm -hmm. If it's from a plant, it's a carbohydrate. I don't care. I don't care what plant it is. Yeah. And so we've just got it wrong. Yeah. And, and I, and I had it wrong for years um, because I was thinking I was eating these giant, I called them my big ass salads, right? <laughs> big ass salads every day almost because I didn't know what to eat either. I didn't know that I could eat meat. Well, I did not know that. I thought, well, I have to eat all these, uh, these plants, these salads and stuff, you know, they're keto, they're keto qualified. Yeah. And and remember, keto is a made up phrase. It's a name that's made up. You should just throw it out. We use it because people Google it and it's going to get a hit, right? Yeah. It's like a smoke of a, of a, a joint or a cigarette, right? Or a, a shot of a really good espresso. But ultimately, keto is dead. Carnivore is the way. But if I say carnivore, I can have chicken and I can have tenderloin, right? No, <laughs> it's, it's missing the most important part of a carnivore lifestyle and a keto lifestyle, which is fat. Mm, yeah. You must eat fat to be fit. And if you don't eat fat, your fertilizer fast. A low fat diet of any form is a cancer causing diet. Okay, well, let's let's break that down. What does that mean? Well, well, ultimately, your body needs fat in order to fuel the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Glucose is not an energy for the mitochondria. And so I know everyone says keto is going from burning sugar to burning fat. But mm -hmm. I will tell you, I believe that's all incorrect. Okay, that's number one. So when you eat plants, they break down to sugars. They go to the hepatic portal bloodstream. They go to the liver and via insulin, they're converted to fat. If you don't have insulin, you can't make fat. That's why every type one diabetic becomes emaciated until someone figures out they have diabetes and gives them insulin. Remember, insulin's only existed for about a hundred years as a drug. Yes. And I had heard stories of people that had type one diabetes and they were, there's no hope for them because they were just wasting away. Well, because uh, what, before. Didn't they eat? what didn't they eat? They, they didn't, didn't eat, eat fat. fat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. They didn't eat Look, fat. Eating fat is healthy. Where have you heard that? 
like in the last no, no I, I was raised uh, from early age we had uh, margarine I grew up on margarine and <laughs> you know that oh. the crunchy crock that big thing I don't know, blue bonnet on it and yeah, blue uh, bonnet, margin, whatever. Right. I mean, a million of them. We loved it. Oh my God, we loved it because I never it, had I, butter until really a couple years ago. Oh, I, mean, <laughs> I had I never had butter or bacon, you know, because I was told I couldn't have that. Right, right. And my okay. sister type one diabetes since age four, she was raised on a low fat diet. And if you're low fat, that means you're eating a lot of carbs and protein. Both of those things require insulin. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so amino acids and sugars require insulin to convert them in the liver to fat. So, guess what? Every diabetic requires a lot of what? Insulin. Pharmaceutical insulin. Okay. Yes. The costs are going up and up and up. What diabetic requires a carbohydrate ever? None. That means they never require a plant. Okay, never. They never require a plant, but they must eat fat and proteins. But no one eats fat because they eat olive oil, avocados. What's an avocado? Where does it, it come from? It comes from a tree, right? It's a fruit. So that means, so it's <laughs> either a fruit. Or, I mean, are, are fruits fat? What other fruit is fat? Can you name another fruit? that you know is fat without an industrial corporation extracting oils from it. Yeah, none. I can't name one. You know, there are none. There what are none. about olives? Are those considered a fruit? Of course they are. They're, you okay. know, they, they're, they're, they're fruit. Uh, look at, again, keto friendly. We're making it up. Okay. Did we maybe eat some olives over the last 10,000 years? Sure we did. Maybe we ate them. 100,000 years ago, but did we collect them and brine them 100,000 years ago? Because eat eat a, 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 an olive off of a tree without putting it in, in, in vinegar or brine, salt, right? Yeah. So, so ultimately, the simple story is that fat is critical. And without fat, you die. And most people in this world eat very little fat. And ultimately, we should probably be consuming about two thirds of our calories or more from fat. We don't do that. So we eat maybe 20% of our calories from oil, very little fat, chicken, turkey, uh, and, and, and tenderloin, right? The lean meats, mm -hmm. that's what we're eating. And, and, and then we cook them in a way that extracts all the fat a barbecue, all the fat drips away, you're eating lean meat, so you're not eating it. And it turns out that fat eaten suppresses inflammation in your bowels. Mm -hmm. And so the microbes, the, they're suppressed and you want the microbes to be suppressed. My opinion is that probiotics are making people a lot of money mm -hmm. on two ways. They're selling the drug and then they're selling the the, 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 the other drugs or the dissections or the other treatments to treat or cure your ailments due to the microbes feeding on the plants and amino acids. Both of them ferment in the gut, which contributes to OCD, dyslexia, autism, and all the spectrum disorders. And these things may also contribute to even miscarriages, infertility, we know, but mm -hmm. genetic and chromosomal abnormalities and birth defects that are caused by the poisons that plants carry to control and kill us. Yes. Yeah, so we basically, we've been told a bill of, you know, lies. For lies, so damn lies and doctors. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, it's true, though. I, I mean, I know that from a very early age, I always liked salads and, you know, vegetables and stuff. And I was told they were healthy, low fat, lots of vegetables. Right. Um, but how how can we, you know, change the narrative? Well, the more we we show by example and we communicate a story 
that people can understand. See, we take a lot of science. We talk about mTOR and Randall cycle and Krebs cycle. And well, what about your cholesterol? What are your numbers and all these things? Yeah. It, it's, it's complicated. And the reason it's complicated, because in order to con- convince you that I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to make it scientifically hard, but you're going to trust me. Yeah. And I learned not to trust me because everything I learned about food is wrong. And so I write, I write about the baby's diet, the way, because diets are dead. I wrote a keto and now carnivore journal coming out uh, with Maria and Craig Emmerich. Uh, I wrote a, a keto for fertility cookbook and I'm a insane blogger on this, but I am doing it for one reason. Every human being alive has the right and to be born, by the way. So those alive and those that are going to be born in the future have the right to understand the human story. Mm -hmm. We are truly ancient hunters. We ate fatty meat. We were not four-legged, long, long long-eared, long snout, eyes on the side, grazing (laughs) animals. We were hunting animals that learned how to make a spear, learn how to use clubs and rocks and hunt in a pack like wolves and lions. That's what we are. Now, no one wants to kill a cow, but would you rather die instead eating kale, which is highly toxic for us? Oh but gosh. We're kale. being brainwashed, <laughs> brainwashed, brainwashed. Yeah. And look at, you don't have to believe my story. Don't actually. But if you're suffering from a medical condition that we've labeled a disease, you might want to at least listen and be open to the possibility that what I'm saying is right. And just look around and start talking to people that did a 30 day, even two weeks of carnivore. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. For me, it was like one week. Like I, I felt like I didn't want to tell anyone. I was feeling so amazing, but in four weeks, hemorrhoids gone, bowel bleeding gone, like arthritis, psoriasis, kidney stones, all gone. Mm -hmm. And there are more, but that's the start. So how do we do it? Well, shows and and blogs like yours and Bella's and Baker and Barry and even Saladino who likes honey and fruits, (laughs) I don't recommend because when my friend Dave died of cancer, Mm -hmm. my bet is these things, small amounts over a long period of time, cause the diseases. In some cases, if you have an anaphylactic reaction to a small amount of something, Mm -hmm. remember how much a dust particle can kill you. How many times have you heard of someone having an anaphylactic reaction to a ribeye steak? Never. And and that was the big eye-opener for me is when I I couldn't, I had was having a hard time digesting lettuce, you know, before I went carnivore. It well, was that lettuce. was the last straw. It was the lettuce, and I and I realized the meat was the only thing that did not cause me to have bloating, pain, you know, all these uh, horrible symptoms. Well, bloating is caused by what? Um, you know, usually I think for me it was fermentation, you know, oh. of, my, of my gut. So um, gas. But it, irritation, yeah, well, gas. It, it, it's. It's, it's fermentation creates alcohol, heat, methane, gas. You blow. Plus, it's inflammatory. It makes you want to go, but you can't. So we think we're constipated. You want to get rid of the pain, but nothing's coming out. So you're forcing it. And you can't get anything out. That's constipation. But when you're carnivore, there's no more constipation because there's no more bloating. There's no yeah. more pain, no more bleeding, no more hemorrhoids. And when your colon is full enough, you can't stop it from coming out. Yeah, yeah. I will agree to that one. Yeah. I and, it, I and I had all those issues before, you know, I had the hemorrhoids, I had the constipation. Yeah. No fun. Toilet paper. I call lettuce nature's toilet paper and it's dirty. And when you're carnivore, you need almost no toilet paper. Like it used yeah. to be rolls and rolls and rolls to clean it up. And like it was, it was then they had the bidet to like wash it down. And yeah. like enough of that no more yeah no i you know people could learn a lot i mean nobody wants to talk about their poop but that is 
that is a big sign of, you know, you have inflammation, um, you have shoestring poops, you know, that's inflammation, right? Oh, yeah. And I had that for years. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, well, I guess I just don't poop right, you know? <laughs> Well, even when they say your poop should look like this, but that's based on a plant-based diet. When you're when you're animal-based only, number one is that's it's it's firmer, and, mm -hmm. and there's and again it's it's it just comes out in, in one spot. Sometimes there's little pieces that come out, and 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 but but it's it's no more blood, no more pain, no more all that stuff. And again we piss, we poop, we vomit, we cough, we sneeze, we yeah. smell, except on carnivore, you don't smell anymore. Oh, yes. That was the other exciting thing. I, I used to be horrible like with the gas and the smelling when I ate, you know, the big salad. Um, and I worked in a pharmacy at the time. And I, you know, of course, I didn't admit to it, but I was like, yeah, that, yeah, it smells. <laughs> well, I mean, garlic, onions, <laughs> A seasoning. I mean, I use butter, butter, blue cheese, and salt are my only seasonings. Yes. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I, and I love how simple it could be, or it is, right? Fossi, it's not... Fossi. It's so, this is, again, this is the baby's way bacon, eggs, butter, beef, kilts, ice cream, and salt. One meal a day. That's the way. Occasionally, mm -hmm. I might have French fries. I'll have a cookie cake. I might even have a bite of, of, of pancakes because it's rare mm -hmm. because, but I'm not addicted to this stuff. I even had a small, small little thing of decaf espresso this morning with a ton of butter. Okay. Oh. I like haven't had coffee in four months. Did I like worry that? Oh my God, I, if I'm having this. Is anyone looking? Uh, -uh. because I already know that the way I feel doing this the, the baby's way mm -hmm. is like radical. I rarely drink alcohol. If I do, it's an extra filthy, dirty blue, uh, blue cheese stuffed olives <laughs> martini. But yeah. again, but some people can't have a little bit of these things because if they do, they're like, that's me. <laughs> I am. I'm a, yes, I'm recovering, you know, alcoholic, chocolateholic, um, carboholic. <laughs> All these but things. but but remember the brain drives the body, and so I say if you label it, you enable it. You are not an addict; you are brainwashed. And so what you're doing is you're readjusting the software, and you're eliminating the software that said you are addicted. You can't be again. In my opinion, we are only what we think we are. Uh, you know, I can do without it. If I ever want it, I'll have it, but I don't want it. Uh, that's the language I think we can lead with because food addiction, again, I think the words addiction are part of the medical community wanting to give you a disease that you're going to need lifelong therapy or a drug. Oh, yeah. Well, so, I mean, the one thing that did help me break free was realizing that I just realized that it didn't have power over me anymore and that I, I, it just didn't serve me. It didn't make me, I had to realize they, these things did not make me feel good. Well, you know? they're part of the social cultural brainwashing that we've been led to believe in the master marketers that, that you, you lead, you live with. Right. Again. Oh, I can't, I can never touch that. Well, mm -hmm. well, again, that's, that's a story we're told in order to control you to a point where you think you're incapable, but why would you put something in your body that's deadly or dangerous for it anyway? Exactly. Right? I mean, cause I feel comfortable, you know, if I am out with my husband and we're on a special occasion or something, and I have, there's like a flower list you know, chocolate torch or something, something like made with good ingredients, I would feel confident and, and I would have a piece, right? And I wouldn't go back and say, oh, I need more and more. I, I, I realized that's for that occasion in that moment in time. 
Because really what we're about is our ability to be discerning. And every human being has the ability to realign their thinking with their current mission of life. And, and you know, I, order, I order a martini once in a blue moon. It mostly sits on my table. I have a sip or two, and, but it's extra olive juice. And then by the time it's, okay, done with it, thank you. Um, but I do love ice cream and, and chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I want to know about your ice cream. Um, well, what are well, the ingredients my, in your ice cream? Well, it's, you could Google me on YouTube and I've got a bunch of, and go to my website and stuff, but look at iced cream. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Yeah. Cream, cream. Eggs. I do vanilla bean. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of cane sugar, okay with me, that's what I do. But some people do a little bit of, uh, of um, glycine. Uh, or they do a little bit of stevia or or honey or something, blueberries. That's fine. But yeah. but again, you got to know where you're at for that. Does it require it? Nope. Again, iced cream. What is it? It's cream that you whip it up and you get a whipping cream. But again, you see, simple sugars are not the culprit. It's the complex carbs are the culprit. Yeah. But complex. why? I don't know. Why? Okay. So, <laughs> so complex carbs fill the stomach and the intestines from the day you're born to the day you die. You're never clear of food in your digestive tract as you eat three meals a day, your entire life, and most of it is a complex carbohydrate. Complex carbohydrates take time to digest day two or three, that means you're always secreting sugar in your bloodstream. Sugar from a plant of any significance or frequency is not natural to the human diet for the first three and a half million years, plus or minus some number, we don't even know what it is, okay? So the simple carbs, if you eat a nice little small amount, from time to time, the sugar goes into your gut, it goes to your liver, insulin goes up, it converts the sugars to fat, your, ins your glucose levels go down, your insulin levels go down. Insulin resistance is basically your complex carbs are filling your belly for the entire life. Your insulin is always up, but the sugars damage the liver. The liver function drops. The insulin can't convert the sugar to fat fast enough. Your glucose levels will begin to rise. Some people are more susceptible to this than others. Mm -hmm. Some people die because of the sugars. Some people die because of the plant chemicals. Some people die because of the fermentation in the gut. And some people die because of the antigens. And so insulin resistance is not true. Our problem is excessive complex carbs in our body. Again, once a baby's done breastfeeding, and if they haven't breastfed, they're bottle fed, and they're feeding on what? Soy, which is full on sugar. Day they're born, the day they die, they're going to be just sucking on sugar, or they're going to be, they're going to be extracting the sugars and the other chemicals from the, from the bag or the bucket of carbohydrates. Yes, that does make so much sense because you're constantly making your body work, right? You're well, your body, your, your digestive tract never turns off, okay? But as a yeah. carnivore who only eats one meal a day, fat and amino acids digest very quickly. You'll never see meat in the, in the, in the bowl, will you? In the toilet bowl. But you no. see vegetables. Yes, I saw lots of vegetables when I was eating lots of vegetables. <laughs> And so ultimately, vegetables want to make you a vegetable. Mm. And meat, fatty meat, wants to make you a lion. Well, and that's the one thing I noticed when I added beef back into my diet in 2016 was how I felt like I, I was high. I was high and I was energized and I was like, what is going on here? 
I just had some beef. It, it, it's I can, can I show you what I'm 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 I'll do a little quick. This this is what I what I do. So this is my wow. my ribeye steak that I've nice. been drying now for about three days. Wow. I'll slice it up. I might eat it raw or I meet put it under the under the broiler and and broil it up uh, black and blue. And then I put butter, blue cheese, and I use mold and salt, but Redmond salt is great. And Himalayan, a lot of great salts out there for yeah. sure. Uh, that, but, but again, your burgers are great. Uh, chicken doesn't have enough fat. So you have to add fat, butter, ghee, tallow, lard. You must eat fat to be fit. Lean diets cause protein poisoning and rabbit starvation. They're deadly for us. Yes, I agree. I mean, and I want to know your opinions on some of the the influencers out there that that suggest like a a protein sparing modified fast, yeah. or to or the other end is to do, you know, you know, just mostly fat and a little bit of protein. Well, and and well, some people are fear mongering with the protein. I've noticed lately too. Okay, protein excessive protein. 20 to 30 percent of your calories or, or it should be could should could be protein but protein comes from muscles from animals it doesn't significantly come from plants and mm -hmm. any powder form of a protein you better wonder where it comes from but if you get it from a cow or a a, a, a pig or sheep uh, I mean those are the basics I think chicken there's not a fat in it I don't love chicken but if you yeah. if you get the thigh or the or or a, a roaster but you collect all the fat and then you add butter ghee lard tallow you know those are good i love i love duck livers there's a lot of fat in duck liver uh, oh. i think organ meats are good but i don't think we've proven they're necessary we do have a supplement a, 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 an organ meat supplement nutritional solutions could be helpful for some people we are not eating enough salt that's for sure Redmond's is great. Uh, I know uh, Celtic is supposed to be great. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting all the minerals and vitamins. And we're iodine deficient. Iodine is in eggs, lots of it. Seaweed, you know, another one for people that like, like are, are on the vegetarian Mediterranean side, but mm -hmm. you're really getting all your minerals and vitamins from, from meat. But fat, see, when you eat fat, it suppresses your appetite fast. And so that's the most important thing to my diet. I make sure I eat fatty meat. I love A5 Wagyu expensive meat. I get a little bit from time to time. I eat my one meal. And if you get inexpensive burgers or inexpensive meat, uh, you can always add, talk to the butcher, talk to the rancher, the, the local farmer, uh, and you, they'll get you more fat, more bones and all that stuff, which I think is important. But Protein sparing diets are not good for us. And there's too much of push to be skinny. Skinny mm -hmm. is deadly. Fat is fit and fertile. Again, the problem is we're obese because we're eating a plant-based low animal fat diet and we're eating more than one meal a day. Like you, you're going to fill up your Ferrari 10 times a day. You're going to get gas tanks and put them in the back seat in the trunk if there is one. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is the craziness, right? Yeah. So the story is simple. And I'm a little, I'm, I'm very, 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 very uh, dramatic and passionate. I'm a scientist. I read it all. Mm -hmm. Most of the science is propagated by people's belief that I say they're maybe wrong. You know, we make like, well, what about, again, mTORs and these cycles and all this stuff? And well, what about your minerals and vitamins from plants? Well, you might, they might have them, but they're not, they're not, they're not um, easily accessible to mm -hmm. our, to our body because they're highly damaging. And the way plants get things from the soil is they chelate them, they grab them, right? And so when you eat them, the plants, the fiber that's not going into your bloodstream, they're holding on to things and they mm -hmm. cause leaky gut, which causes things to go in and out at will and a tremendous amount of inflammation. And, and so 
uh, I've kind of a lengthy uh, answer to this, but yeah. fat is where it's at and skinny yeah. is deadly. And ultimately a protein sparing low fat diet is as deadly as a high carb, uh, 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 low fat diet. Yeah. And I agree. And I can, you know, I felt the benefits from adding more fat, you know, sometimes you got to go out of your way to get, get more fat, but it's worth it. Right. I, I was, I had a burger with blue cheese and lobster and mm -hmm. I asked for more butter and, uh, and sour cream and mayonnaise. I did have a couple of fries, but I, I like my, my fry is about, it's a, it's, it's two to one, uh, two servings of mayonnaise and sour cream and one serving of a fry, meaning that <laughs> proportionally and a ton of salt and the interesting part about salt is your body will excrete excessive salt and it will hold on to excessive sugar. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Yes. Okay. And, and remember, well, people may not know that plants are foreign to our nutrition in any significance or frequency for the first three and a half million years which likely is like 99.9% .9 of our existence. And now with the marketers who like to sell alcohol, tobacco, coffee, caffeine drinks, heroin, cocaine, marijuana now, ultimately a plant-based diet just runs in the same line as all those toxic addictive consumptions, consumer goods, which are bad for the Ferrari, the temple, and then you're going to need a, a dissection, a drug, or a therapist to fix your problem. The problem is, as long as you're eating the diet of a domesticated animal, you are not going to be cured. Yes, that is so true. <laughs> well, before before we end our interview today, we're um, ending. No, we're not. We're not what? ending. Not yet. Not yet. I'm not done with you. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you a few more questions about, you know, besides infertility, do you do you work with people um, or what kind of um, issues do you see, you know, like hormonal issues? Okay. Do you see that doesn't involve fertility per se? All right. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist, immunologist, nutritionist, um, <laughs> a little bit of a mind-body therapist. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a coach and cheerleader. I, I focus, my main practice is infertility. Mm -hmm. I do surgeries, IVF. I do, I do hormonal treatments related to fertility. I don't treat menopause and I don't treat any of these other things, but okay. I talk about it. I talk to people about it all the time on my mind, body, smile, or my, my kilts, mighty tribe, or drkilts.com, I'm always listening, learning, and communicating and sharing. But my practice of medicine is really related to fertility currently, but okay. I write and share these things because I've practiced, I mean, I've practiced internal medicine for a year uh, during my training. And I practice a lot of it throughout my, my day to day, but hormonal Hormonal imbalance is a nice phrase. I don't know how true it is, but let's just say inflammation is the cause of all of our problems. If you can solve your problems with nutritional changes, like we're talking about, the inflammation will go away and the hormonal abnormalities will also be resolved in so many ways. So we, we, we use language that drives us to think we need a drug, but in fact, we need to eat like a lion, not like a pig, cow, or sheep, and you will cure many of those things. Because the whole purpose here is if you can learn how to help yourself heal through coaches, cheerleaders, um, uh, people who have experienced them themselves. I mean, um, we're the big fat surprise by Nina Teicholt. We're going to be doing a book. Uh, uh, we do weekly books on my on my mighty tribe, and we're probably going to do this one over two weeks. Uh, these are books I've learned from, but it it really is 
all the diseases are caused by these same five things. Plant sugars, plant chemicals, plant antigens, fermentation of plants, and excessive exercise. That is it. And our DNA is the director of our general environment we should be living in, but we're living in an environment that marinates us in plant chemicals and sugars and bacteria and yeast. And yes. so my, my practice, you know, again, I, I do all of this, but if you come to me in my practice, it's going to be fertility related, but people call me on this and I blog on it or I talk about it. And I, and I, and I do a lot of interviews related mm -hmm. to overall human health and wellness that's what you feed the mind with, you feed the mouth with, and then you marinate the beautiful body in. Hanging out with people like you is going <laughs> to help people grow and learn and create. That's what this community is really about. And well, and that's what I love about this community and I love about you is it's not like one thing because we are not a closed system, right? We're not just, we're not just carnivore. We're not just uh, mindset we're you know we're we're a multi-dimensional being right <laughs> and and we we t we encourage vegan vegetarians mediterraneans pescatarians and carnivarians to all sit at the table and communicate yeah. to not to yell and you know all this stuff i'm not telling everyone i don't no one has to be a carnivore be a be a pescatarian be a mediterranean a, a vegetarian or a vegan that is your choice if you're having some problems as a vegan, vegetarian, and Mediterranean, go to one meal a day and add fat. As a vegan, you can't add fat. You add oils, mm -hmm. coconut oil. But if you, if you add more oils or fat and eat only one time a day and you cook the carbs well, but you limit variety, variety is deadly. You cannot have boyfriends and girlfriends. Your husband or wife is not going to allow that. And I, you know, I've experienced that too, is the, the more variety I tried to have, I, I didn't know what was causing the inflammation because I had too much things going on. So I had to really narrow it down. You got to eliminate. You yeah. must eliminate. And the, the, the cows graze on the natural grasses of the country. Only 2% are, are, are ancient grasslands. We've got to bring that back when they're able to do that and the soil regenerates. See, we have, we have, we have uh, uh, farmed on the, on the soils. We've depleted all the minerals and vitamins that actually have been deposited for thousands, if not millions of years. And so it's going to take some time, but be patient, be patient. Well, and I've and, seen it in action. I I'm in Colorado here. And so we have a lot of regenerative farms around us. Um, and I live out in the valley, in the Animus Valley. It's beautiful. Um, it, but I love that I get to go drive by all of these amazing farms and I get to go get my meat from the farm. I'm, I feel lucky and blessed for sure. Go, go out to the farms. I mean, I, I bought from Snake River, Alpine, many, but, but, you know, there are many great butchers. By the way, your butcher is your best healer and and you know chicken soup right grandmother's chicken soup the problem is yeah. they modernized it and added the wrong stuff but um, mm -hmm. i have an office in colorado springs by the way i used to live oh. in, in denver and nice. my daughter was born there and a great great community but all over the country and all over the world the human beings all over the world are just like you and i and the cells are the same the metabolism the same the diseases are the same we might say, oh, I'm different than you. We're not different. There's nothing different about you than me. We're human beings. If we strip away our names, our social, cultural norms, we're just simple, ancient, ancient hunters that have been domesticated by the 5% that figured out if I feed you grass and grains, I can control you because mm. you become addicted to grass and grains, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, nicotine, caffeine, sugar, right? Plant mm -hmm. sugars, and you're addicted. And so, so I can they're that. trying to control our minds so they can do what, you know, they want us to do, right? 
meat is bad for you. Meat mm. causes cancer and vegetables are important and good for you. Bye. <laughs> Yes, yes, I love now it. Now let's go have a big steak because the masters tell you to eat mush and they eat meat. Why is A5 Wagyu the most expensive meat? Because it's only for the masters who control the, the money and the marketing. Yes. Again, I'm not, look, this is a great story. I'm not blaming anyone. You yeah. got to blame yourself. Blame yourself for your situation because you must understand, number one, I always say faith first, God, you, and you need to learn the language of the most common religions, love and kindness, forgiveness, gratitude, generosity, right? Yeah. And peace is built on forgiving. And so this is not a story to blame anyone. This is a story to take responsibility for your health and wellness, that you can come to me and pay me lots of money. But you might, you might just look at uh, your blog, my blog, so many blogs out there. Mm -hmm. But again, there's blogs on vegan, vegetarians, fruititarians, pescatarians, whatever it is. Find something you like. Well, yeah, the, I mean, people have to figure out what they need at a certain time and what's going to work for them. And they don't know if they don't try, right? Well, well. Plants are poison, they're chemicals and drugs that'll make you feel good until you don't. Well, and that's what I see. I see maybe it's not just because you went on a vegan diet, maybe it's because you took out all the crap, right? You took out well, all that well, crap but, but, and, and okay. you felt good for a little bit. But but I don't know what crap is mm -hmm. because because cookies and cakes are plant products. Oh, okay. okay. And okay. there's no evidence. We've not proven that vegetables are better than cake or cookies. Okay. We think they are because we judge them, but where's the scientific study that proved it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I not can't that find I trust it. Science. Not that I can't either, but, but ultimately, yes. you know, my grandmother smoked Paul Malls, drank Manhattan's, lived to 104. Okay. Do we recommend mm -hmm. those things? Nope. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> We know. Yes. But but one thing I just want to say is that sugars are critical to your existence, but they're either made in your body from the fatty meat or they actually are part of the cell wall of every cell of your body. They're called glycans. Mm -hmm. Glycans are critical for the glycosylation, the binding of a sugar to a protein or a lipid protein, or even a sugar lipid protein in order to make it function. And when you learn about glycobiology, the glycobiome, the glycome, you'll be amazed at the science we are actually- Oh, yes. I think it was you that I heard about it from. And I, I was um, very curious. I'd never heard of that term. No one has. And even really smart scientists have really never heard of the glycobiome. The glycobiome is the master. It's the Teflon shield that protects your body. Sugars are critical barcodes to identify friend or foe, to actually turn things on and turn things off. The sugars are how the RSV virus changes, how the COVID virus changes, how the flu and cold viruses all change. It's, su it's sugars. But everyone thinks sugar, glucose. Yeah, It's so important for energy. It's never your energy. It's a drug that makes you feel like it's your energy, but it's not. It's like caffeine, mm -hmm. Coke, Coke, heroin, sugar, and caffeine make you feel good, but they're drugs that are plant chemicals that want to control you, domesticate you. Wolves and lions that are fed plants become dogs and cats. Those are domesticated animals. And remember, dogs and cats, you may not know, mm -hmm. they're, they're manipulated wolves and lions. We made them. They did not exist in the wild. So we're manipulating everything. And what yeah. you want to do is get back to your ancestral roots. Listen, I go to work every day. I, I don't, you know, I'd love to go skiing and, 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 and surfing and snowboarding and biking all day long. But I go to work because work 
is the best way to get rid of worry and build your most beautiful life. Work is critical in life. Yes, I agree. I find that I feel fulfilled when I'm doing my life's work, right? <laughs> and is this easy? No. No. But the best things in life are hard. And you check your pulse or you see if you got your condensation on a mirror. If you do, you're alive. That means you're capable of everything and anything. And I love that. I love that. And I want to know about your cup, your kilt cup. Well, well, my my kilts cups and plates, they're 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 I've been doing pottery since I was 16 years old. Oh, Mrs. Wong wow. taught me in high school. She also taught me jewelry. So I love jewelry, although I didn't make this one. My friend Tosh did. Uh I I I love doing it. I love, I, I sell it a nominal amount, not that much, but, and we're, well, I think we're short right now. So I got to get in my studio and get the kiln working. And uh, it's just fun. Get some clay and start doing something or doing poetry or music or, or building something, whatever it is. Every human being has the potential and the gift of God. Oh, I love that. Oh, that makes my heart feel full. And, and again, it's, it's <laughs> one thing about medicine. We don't talk about religion or God, but yeah. spirituality, religion, God is critical and is the foundation of humanity. We've been talking about God for millions of years. Mm -hmm. This isn't new. It's who we all are. And we're sometimes distracted by the story because we judge against things rather than maybe looking and seeing the beauty in some things that might not have all of the things that we believe in, but you pick, you pick some of them, it'll grow. The seeds will grow through the weeds and the weeds will show up as beautiful flowers. Oh, yes. And I want to know, how do you incorporate all of this into your practice with people? Do you, do you have them, you know, do breath work or meditation or, any of that stuff to kind of help calm their, you know, nervous system. Now you can tell I'm a little mm -hmm. high energy. Yeah. And I have to slow down sometimes. I've written a number of books. Mm -hmm. I wrote another one on keto, a cookbook, Keto for Fertility. I have another one called The Fertile Feast. Another one called Living Your Best Life. Another one called... Um, the, the fertile secret. So I write a lot. I blog a lot. We have support groups and, and, and plenty of, of blogging. And we recommend that people talk to someone. they are infinite people to talk to your friend, your family, a, 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 a stranger. Nowadays, you could just start blogging. I'm lonely and I'm infertile. Can someone help me? And, mm -hmm. and, it's, you know, get on these, all these blogs, these boards, and there's so many people. We have something called the Fertile Spirit. Danielle helps run that. Uh, we talk to so many people out there that are working to share. And so much of it is for free, for free. There's so many YouTube channels and Facebook, Instagram, all of that. And, and so ask and it shall be given, knock and the door shall open. And ultimately, all you need to do is think in the right direction. I am fertile. There are plenty of people to talk to. I'm really getting some great advice. That's where you want to start with. Journal. Get a journal. Write. Or get a pad and pen. pen. Write. Draw. Paint. Splash paintings on the paint on the wall. But we're, the interesting part to the story is I believe that God creates everything. God knows what God's doing. You have to have faith and understanding, and God knows. The trouble is we don't, we don't participate in that language very much. We are blaming God, but we maybe are missing the point of what he's doing. It's, it's like getting out on the training field to become a great athlete or climb to the top of the Himalayas. You just don't set out to go to the top of the Himalayas and you're going to be complaining and you might die on the way. But if you get a trainer, a coach, a cheerleader, or you begin to learn by reading, by watching, by practicing, you will get to the point you want to get to or better. 
you must be open to the or better is actually God's gift to you to get another present to teach you something even more magical. That's the part we need to be listening and learning. Again, science, we, 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 there's a lot of great stuff in science, mm -hmm. but most of, the, most of the magical inventions are by people actually who go outside of the scientific norm, the mainstream. They break the mold. And each and every human being is capable of breaking the mold. And the reason they've got troubles is because God is gifting us these treasures into share a guidance and a direction that maybe we never imagined. Mm. But if you begin to practice, God's got this. Oh my gosh. You, but you got to say it fast. You got to begin to, you got to be able to embrace it more quickly. Some people are more practiced at it. Some people can listen better. I talk too much sometimes. <laughs> Me too. I'm guilty. <laughs> yes. You're for, but you're we're just so, we're, we're, we're so passionate though. We're passionate about all of these gifts that we've been given and we just want to share it with the world, right? Passion, enthusiasm will overcome any pain or entrenchment in despair. But you need to begin to listen, read, communicate and practice with the new language. That's why I don't use the word addiction. Mm -hmm. I don't use the word you're sick or diseased. You start with I'm healthy and well. And I'm practicing and learning a new language. Oh, I love that. So many, so many great nuggets. It, you, you know, know it, it, pearls and nuggets. That's absolutely it. Mm -hmm. Right. We're, we're oysters. And, and we have amazing pearls within each and every one of us. And, you know, people look at other successful people as we label them. By the way, if you're born alive, if you're born, you're successful. And ultimately, all things happen according to the master plan. Mm -hmm. The interesting part about the master plan, you determine it. Because God is within all of us. Yes. I love that. So um, what? how can people reach out to you? If they want to either work with you or see your, your content. Well, you go to either drkilts.com or cnyfertility.com. You could find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and I don't know what else. I don't, I got great people that help me on this, but I love, I do a lot of answering as much as I can. Uh, yeah. I would do 24, seven, 365, but I get six hours of sleep a night. I might take one to three, 10 minute naps prayer meditation a day. Mm -hmm. I do my motion work at three to 4 a.m. most every day. And, uh, but yeah, just, you can Google on, look at Amazon for my books. Uh, you can, again, just Google Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z. And, uh, or, and again, you got to keep getting out there and listening and learning. And it doesn't all make sense right away, mm -hmm. but ultimately you got to make sense for you. You're creating your story, not my story. You know, you're the you're the amazing the gift that God has created, uh, and begin to take. See, everything has already been written. We're all just putting it to different different uh, ways, right? We're mm -hmm. we're layering it, or we're throwing it out there, or splashing it on a wall. Um, most importantly, you need to love yourself. And there's mirror work. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I love you. And I thank you, God, Lord. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. This this pain and sorrow and distraction is a gift. And I didn't realize it. And now I do. Yes. I love that. I love that message, doctor. Dr. Kilt, thank you so much for talking to me tonight. 
Oh, my pleasure. And I, I can be found sometimes on Bella or, or yeah. Mighty Tribe. I get to Baker. I do Chafee. I get on all of these. I'm learning Parquet. So many amazing Pijunich. I'm watching them because I love them. And yeah. we need to all work together in order to share a story to help humanity heal because the challenges we're experiencing seem to be on the rise and the cost is a hardship for most people, but it's been a pleasure. I love, love doing this with you. Can, can, would you join, join Kiltz on one of his interviews? Uh, yes, of course. Good. good, good. <laughs> well, good. and I mean, I was going to say, I would, you know, I'm going to have to look into your mighty tribe because I have seen, you know, your, your YouTube channel. I've seen some of the meetings, you know, on there. Um, and you're just a breath of fresh air and all, you know, all kinds of energy. So. Well, we all have it. And, and again, we, in some way, we've all been addicted to the plants and that's why we're so sick. And we're really working to make the change. And only one person can do that, each individual. And the Mighty Tribe was kind of a little like Bella's, actually, because yeah. we're on the Mighty Network, I think it's called. Yeah. And, and, it's, and that's why I, I like to be on Bella's and others, and because it's so important that we do this in integration. And I might not be there every, every meeting, but we're, we're all there. And we need to inspire the future because... You know, this type of movement has happened before, mm -hmm. but but I think the movement today has the biggest potential with social medicine. Social medicine is social media. Are you, a, 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 did you go to medical school, by the way, Rosa? No, I, well, I did go um, to, um, for medical assisting school, which is, you know, a trade. I did that, um, but I, yeah, I did not go to medical school medical school per se my point here is that <laughs> you don't need to oh yeah everything you need to know is on dr google oh okay the internet contains more information than i had access to in medical school and residency yeah and so you have to be a little discerning mm -hmm. and you gotta like well it's like maybe i need to look around and listen and learn and and if they want a lot of money, you know, I would say, you know, a, a nominal investment on a, on a regular basis can be helpful. I think that's important. A, a individual coaching and cheerleading, maybe a little bit more, but mm -hmm. how much money are you spending on coffee or, or, or pizza, beer and wine? Those are not good for your health. How much money are you spending on your healthcare, medicine, drugs? You know, again, we've got, and we got to change it up. And marijuana is deadly, deadly. Don't ayahuasca, marijuana, psilocybin, like not good for any of us. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think, you know, I even was going to try to go to all these expensive like coaching schools. I finally discovered, um, you know, Mark Sisson's Primal Health Coach Institute. That was the best one for me because I, I knew all the information already, but I learned how to implement that information and how to coach people. And that was the biggest thing that I got out of it. Get a coach, learn to coach, be a coach, yes. uh, teach a coach. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're, we're passing it, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're passing it forward. Right. But that's so important. And again, you got to pay to participate and pay to play. Mm -hmm. You're doing something, you're putting it in there because free You've already gotten it. It's called birth. Yes. That one's free. Everything else you must your, invest. Your birthright. <laughs> you got to invest in everything. And so, yeah, again, but but do the degrees matter? Nope, they don't. No, and that's what I, don't. I learned that, you know, because I thought for so long, well, no one's going to listen to me, even though I've had all these experiences because I don't have the RD. I don't, you know, I don't have the doctor. <laughs> But it turns out you don't need that. Bella, um, Bella, 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 one that is inspiring, inspirational, um, and believable. And so there are more and more and more and more coming out yeah. the same way. And, you know, all these lengthy degrees doesn't make someone smart. Mm -hmm. It might mean they have a lot of knowledge. But smart is means to me being able to utilize the knowledge 
in a way that is makes sense to humanity. And it's not just about making a lot of money. I mean, money's not bad. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're I, in my belief, we're just, we need to mix it up and change it up. Yes, exactly. Yes. We just need to live the example, right? And that's what we're doing. We need live to the example. Again, at 66 and a half, I've never felt better. Uh, I'm lifting weights. I'm lifting my body out of bed at least. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm riding my bike. I'm, I'm, um, I'm participating in life. I, I get to work every day. I love it. And we need to be re-inspired every single day of life. Yes, and you have really inspired me. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> well, but now the, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> well, and you know, I get great sleep. I meditate. Uh, but when I'm awake in the middle of the night, guess what? I get up. I read a book. I do mm -hmm. writing. I do painting or pottery. I'm, or I'm, I'm, I'm meditating and praying to God, grateful for all my problems, my losses, my failures, because those are simply the gifts that God has given each and every one of us to make the most amazing story ever in the universe. And you don't have to be anyone else, be yourself again, whether you, whether listen, there's no such thing as just, I'm just this or just that I'm this again, live at large in a way of what you believe that we need moms and dads and wives and husbands and parents and caretakers. We need cleaners and builders and just everything. Like everything you are is like the most important thing ever created. Yes, I agree. Yes, yes it is. It is. We all have our purpose, right? Well, thank you so We're much. I'm going to let you go. Um, but I've enjoyed, <laughs> I've enjoyed our conversation so much. This yes. has been amazing. I look forward to communicating more and more, uh, anything you need, uh, just give me a call back, yes. text me, I'll send you my cell phone and I share it with anyone. Oh my gosh. You're so, you're so gracious. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Rosa. God bless you. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.